Hey, Scotty, would you like to dive back into Ravnica with me? Ooh, that is much better. Okay, let's do that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim deck reviews. This series where Scotty and I take the time to go through the pre-con decks, read the cards that are inside, give you an idea how strong they are, and if they synergize with a given commander, the cuts to the deck, and how good the product is straight out of the box. At the end, we score each deck inside of an expansion against each other out of 10. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back, and relax as we dive into this review. And I'm your host, Vlad. This is Scotty. Thank you very much, Scotty, for that intro. And today we're taking a look at the first of the Murders of Carlo Manor Commander deck. This is Bling Game. Go to your foes, identify suspects. It's a Boris deck and includes the collector sample pack and of course the usual stuff that you'll get, which is a 100 card deck with 12 new cards. So it's a downgrade from the last one. A deck box, 10 double sided tank tokens. Foil Edge Display Commander, the Life Wheel Strategy Insert, and the Reference Card. So, without any further ado, let us break into this. And yeah, it's been a strange ride with the Merlis Account of Manor. And today we're diving into this Commander decks. I'm pretty excited for them. Okay, it's done. Yes, I have managed because they keep changing the, the boxes. So, I have seen quite a few fun ones here that I would love to try, including this one, if I'm not mistaken. So, here we have a little card holder box, which, as usual, will not hold the deck proper if you're going to sleeve it, which we advise you to always sleeve your decks. Uh, if you do sleeve them, they won't hold it. But other than that, it's good to just keep around if you need some holders for your leftover cards. And there you go. And you have the life wheel and you have all the counters for the deck. These are the first strike counters. This is a plus one, plus one counters. And then we open on the side, you get the deck and the strategy insert. And also you get suspected counters. So you might want to keep these just in case. Don't throw them away in case you forget <laughs> what it does. Even though most of the time it tells you on the deck proper and here we have the the little strategy insert that we'll have a look real quick so ooh, okay so this is the continuation of the puzzle that riddle that people had to solve to be able to get some extra rewards in the mtga if i'm not mistaken and other things and you have bling game and the theme of the deck the commander's rules in general and a little bit about the commander Nelly Borka, Impulsive Accuser, which we saw, actually we unboxed one of them in our Collector Boosters box unboxing. So that was fun. Before we dive into straight into the commander proper, we're gonna open the Collector Booster sample pack as usual. This holds three cards. One is gonna be a token a card. Well, I, I would reckon this usually hold that. I'm not pretty sure because I've not opened one yet, but three cards, one is a, is a token. And then you get two cards one is going to be a rare or mythic and one is going to be uncommon so a yielding gatekeeper we've seen before and then a ma magnetic snuffler and the dossier foil version that's very cute and then we'll put it here and then we'll look at the commander nelly borka impulsive accuser so uh, even though we saw it before we're going to reread it because this is the commander deck so it's a 2-4 human detective that costs four with boris in a call it's a legendary creature of course it has vigilance and when it attacks suspect target creature then go to all suspected creatures whenever one or more creatures an opponent controls deal combat damage to one or more of your opponents you and the controller of those creatures each draw a card so it is one or more creatures deal combat damage which means you can only draw a card but you're going a lot of creatures of course when it attacks it means that you have to keep it alive 2-4 at the beginning it's easy to keep alive but if the other commanders have um, big creatures you'll want to be able to well cloak it in some way or another defend and protect it so therefore what is the commander trying to do well the commander is goading everything every time so it wants to attack it wants to goad and from the goad it wants to draw it's not the strongest commander. Let's just leave it at that for now. We'll see how the deck goes. The color combination, you can have a, quite a bit of power behind it. And uh, depending on how they build it and seeing that it is the blame game, it is go to your creature and suspect. So I think perhaps, you know, the suspects are not gonna attack you. So maybe it's gonna be a really interesting game where none of the board can attack you and you can 
just go on and attack everybody else. <laughs> It'd be interesting if that was the case. Anyway, as usual, in case you don't know and you're new here, first off, welcome, hi. And uh, secondly, we take a look at the commander proper and the commander proper is the card that we will be reviewing the rest of the deck around of. Not the general, which we'll have a look at in just a second, but the commander proper and then we'll see if the cards synergize with the commander. So that's the commander. And then, ooh, feather. That is nice we also saw feather in our collector's unboxing as well feather radiant arbiter is a 4-3 angel that costs three has flying and lifelink whenever you cast a non-creature spell that targets only feather you may choose any number of other creatures that spell could target and pay two for each of those creatures if you do for each of those creatures copy that spell that copy targets that creatures so this is very much a kind of like a prowess slash you know power up my creatures as much as possible strategy now of course this could be synergistic because in the end whatever you put on this you can put on nelly and you can put it on anywhere else the so it's very much a support but at the same time it could be just a very very good commander so far i'm not gonna discount it does it synergize with the with nelly in a way it does because if you're given this you know a protection from a certain color and then you attack into that color with this one you can then cloak it and yeah you can protect it through this one you can power it up through this one so in a way it does synergize and we have the strategy insert so before we start and look at uh, the deck proper we'll have a look at the tokens really really quickly this human is so sad i'm so sad that is a nice illustration though we have some gold and then on the flip side we have the monarch so there's gonna be a card was <laughs> a care deep so it's gonna have be that one okay so uh, if you didn't know before we start actually we made our own car marketplace here in the uk it's the very friendly sharks car marketplace uk exclusive so if you're wanting to buy and sell cars like this well there you have a place we'll leave a link in the description let's go on immortal obligation is the first rare it's an instant cost to return target creature card from an opponent's graveyard to the battlefield under their control with a duty counter on it for as long as the creature has a duty counter on it it's good and it can't attack you or permanently control it can't block creatures you control again yes very very synergistic it's a it's a nice one because if something huge dies you can just keep it good and so long as they can't destroy the you know the enchantment then well or counter sorry because it's not enchantment it's the counter then yeah your Gucci, as they say, so very, very nice, and it is synergistic. Then we get Otherworldly Escort, a 4 3 human detective, as Flash, cost 4. When it dies, if it's not a spear, return to battlefield under owner's control with 4 charge counters on it. It's a spear detective for 2 tap, remove a charge counter to destroy target creature that will damage to you this turn. That is a deterrent, it's not synergistic though but it is a deterrent so next up we have redemption arc cost three is an enchantment aura enchanted creature gets indestructible and go dead and then you for to exile enchanted creatures so that's good goats it is definitely synergistic it's an enchantment and um yeah it's not a bad card should they for whatever reason try to remove redemption arc you can just exile that creature which doesn't destroy it, which is even better so that's pretty pretty cool so if you want to keep the theme of the deck so far you only would re remove otherworldly escort then we have traveling pairs which in case you didn't know a little bit of drama happened about this because the uh, artist faye dalton clearly used reused assets from previous illustrations from other artists i we you know it's not known if it was through ai or whatever the the reason but um because in case you didn't know ai usually not all of them but most of the image ais uh, were initially trained with copyrighted materials so despite the fact that they will say that they won't push out copyrighted materials they will train on copyrighted materials so if it they use that they didn't know for example either way it's a bad move anyway let's look at the card trouble impairs an enchantment cost four if an opponent will begin an extra turn that player skips that turn instead whenever an opponent attacks you with two or more creature draws their second card each turn or casts their second spell each turn you draw a card so whenever they do extra stuff each turn you draw a card cute um i guess there might be some interaction with one of the decks that's currently in the pool but it's not synergistic with the 
commander. So keep that in mind. Havoc Eater is a 3-3 elemental. And we've seen this as well. It costs seven, has flying when it's battlefield for each opponent. Go up to one target creature that opponent controls and then put up plus X plus one plus one counters on this creature where X is the total power of those creatures go to this way, which can be insane. Uh, so very, very strong and it is synergistic. And we have Hot Pursuit. It's an enchantment cost two. It's red when it's is battlefield. Suspect target creature and an opponent controls as long as it remains in the battlefield. This remains in the battlefield. That creature is also goaded. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if two or more players have lost the game, gain control of all goaded and or suspected creatures until the end of turn and tap them, they gain haste until end of turn. So this is interesting. Until the beginning of combat, if two or more have lost the game, um does this mean that you gain control on the loose no matter what happens so long as this is in play or only if um in the previous turn you know for everybody uh they lost the game then you get the creatures it's an interesting thing to, to clarify here if you know let me know in the comments down below either way yeah, it's suspect and goaded, and it's pretty interesting. If it works the way that I think, which means that so long as two players have died, you know, lost the game, then you get their creatures, that's insane. If that's that way, either way. Then we get Mob Verdict, which is a sorcery. It costs four, and it has secret council. Each player secretly votes for another player. Then those votes are revealed for each vote an opponent received. It deals two damage to that player, and each creature that player controls for each voter you received you draw a card and now i like this i usually don't like politicking but i like the fact that this is advantageous no matter what to you so that's pretty nice and um yeah they're more likely to shoot each other off than give you cards but that's their dilemma haha <laughs> see prisoner's dilemma haha <laughs> this is a, a an experiment in psychology and thought processing so uh it costs five it's a sorcery it's red uh, each opponent secretly chooses silence or snitch, then it, their choices are revealed. If each opponent chooses silence, each opponent must choose silence. It, it deals four damage to each of them. If each opponent chooses snitch, then it deals eight damage to them. Otherwise, it deals 12 damage to each opponent who chose silence. Ha! Ah. <laughs> now, this is tricky. I like this. Now, um, it's a tricky one. Again, policy king and all that set aside. It's not, these two cards are not very synergistic with the, the main part of your deck. And if you want to be more aggressive, you can remove them, but they're fun. Then we have take the bait, it costs four. It's an instant, has a spell only during an opponent's turn and only during combat, prevent all combat damage that will be dealt to you and please walk your control, untap all attacking creatures and go them. After this phase, there's additional combo phase. Now, Usually I don't like what it is called the fog effects. This is a fog effect attached onto something else. So I like this one because it allows you to say, oh, you want to attack with all these creatures. That's great. Then all the creatures that have attacked me, they basically can't attack me anymore. So long as they're goaded, uh, that's, that's really, really annoying. Yeah. Next up. And of course, that one does synergize. Next up, we have Ransom Note, which we saw before. It's a clue that does quite a few things. It allows you to go target creatures, so it's synergistic. And it's nice that you get to do more than one thing, so that's nice. We have Angel of the Ruins, 5-7 Angel. And it costs 7 flying when it's the battlefield. has up to 2 target artifacts and or enchantments. You can plain cycle it. Bit expensive for what it does. It is a 5-7 that can hurt, and it can definitely hurt your opponents by exiling. But there are better removals in this color that allow you to either board wipe or target specific things. So for this cost, I would expect to do a war wipe. Now, of course, it is a 5-7 that stays on a board fire, so it could be annoying. I'll leave it up to you. It's an okay card if you have better replace it. It does not synergize. And we have comeuppance. It's a 4 cost instant is why prevent all damage that will be dealt to you and planeswalkers you control the sources you do not control if damage for a creature source is prevented this way 
Comeuppance deal, deals that much damage to that creature if damage from a non-creature source if you run this way. Comeuppance deals that much damage to the controller. That is very annoying. Uh, again, another way to protect yourself. And I think this is more of a deterrent even more so because anything that cannot be goaded by you, you will use this on. So that's very, very nice. It's, it's interesting. It, it does prevent a lot of damage and returns it. Usually prevent damage for this much, not great, but this returns it into their faces so or into the creatures faces so that's that could be really really good for one turn though we have darian king of keldor is a 3-3 human soldier cost six whenever you're dealt damage you may create that many one one white soldier creature tokens to expensive for is trying to do and also it's creature tokens is I Boros can really create a great decks for tokens, but I hope we're not trying to go too much that way. Duelist Heritage is an enchantment, costs three. Whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double struck until the end of turn. And be quite quite annoying for sure. Oh, that's the Sun Champion makes a return. It's a four loyalty planeswalker that costs six. <clears throat> You plus one to create three one one white soldiers minus three to destroy all creatures power four greater so basically a lot of the things as well here because half of them have so one two three are going to die um careful with that but it's one way that they give you another way to you know board wipe and minus seven curses you control get plus two plus two and have flying that's an emblem uh, but i mean it's a Please Walker, it's white. There are better ones, but you know, if you want to keep it, why not? It can still help you depending on how the rest of the deck is built. Next up, we have Keeper of the Accord. It's a 3 4 human soldier that costs four at the beginning of each opponent and step. If the player controls more creatures than you, you create a 1 1 white soldier creature token. And at the beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player Controls more lands than you. You missed your library for a basic land card, put it in the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. The second part is quite strong. First part is nice, but again, we're going off the path of we're not really synergizing with our commander. Mm. Oh, learn of the third path. That's nice. There's a 2 1 human artifice that costs 3. It's wide vigilance. And when it enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. Tap, and you and target opponent each draw a card. So, very annoying um yeah i will i like this one because it's a smaller creature it can definitely be buffed and you can do many more things um yeah it allows you to destroy a specific artifact or enchantment is definitely better than uh, than the other one so i will keep this one in is this synergy with a commander though not really i mean it's not goading or doing anything of that that sort promise of loyalty costs five it's a sorcery each player puts a vow counter on a creature they control and sacrifices the rest each of those creatures can't attack you or plays well you control for as long as it is has a vow counter on it very very good and again this is synergy so i would like to keep that oh selfless square as a one one human soldier cost four has flash when it's battlefield permit all damage will be dealt to you this turn whenever damage that will be dealt to you is permitted put that many plus one plus one counters on the square so again this i would qualify as yes it synergizes with the deck alongside some type of fog effects because if you're having those creatures that you can't go attack you at least you transform it it's kind of like tai chi you know use your enemy strength against them so that i actually think it does synergize somewhat then we have savine's reclamation sorcery cost three return target card for mana value three or less from graveyard to the battlefield if this spell was cast from graveyard you may copy the spell and you may choose a new target for the copy always good to have if the deck allows for it and i think this deck will allow for it so it's not a bad card smuggler share costs three it's an enchantment at the beginning of each end step draw a card for each opponent who drew two or more cards this turn then create a treasure token for each opponent that had two or more lands enter the battlefield in their control this turn and the first part is more likely and the second part you can draw extra cards it's an extra way of drawing cards it's, is it great it's okay if you have better though replace a stalking leonin or leonin is a three three cat archer that costs three one it enters battlefield secretly choose an opponent reveal the player you chose the exile target creature that's attacking you if it's controlled by a chosen player activate only once yes it's synergistic but it is situational and only once if you have better it replaces sun titan makes a return as usual you know i mean it's too expensive for what it does the sun titan and especially in a deck like this one it feels a little bit scattered it feels like it's trying to do a bit too many things at once so oh, one more muse two three they cost four christians can't attack you unless the control pays two generic for each 
creature they control that's attacking and i see this is the way that i would have taken the game more towards if i can't goad it you can't attack me unless you i tax you so unless you pay the mana or you can't attack me at all or a pariah or something like that so this is the way that i would have created the deck myself so yeah uh, this definitely goes into the pile of synergistic winds of wrath these are all creatures that aren't enchanted they can't be regenerated you have maybe one or two enchantments so far that are really to your creatures and this creeps the um, does not keep the goaded creatures because the goaded creatures only have a goaded counter they're not really enchanted by it so you know do that as it may it's a boar wipe that's that's all that's all i can say i'd rather use a better boar wipe though for that cost and maybe even spend a bit more one more and then have something that boar wipes more than just creatures agitator ant is a 2-2 insect that costs three and it's right at the beginning of your hand step each player may put two plus one plus one counters on a creatures they control go to each creature that had counters put on them this way oh i like this now this is really nasty because yes oh you can power up your creatures but you're gonna kill each other not me very nice brash toner is a one one goblin that costs five mm, that's a bit expensive indestructible whenever it's dealt damage it deals damage damage to target opponent and then if you can fight another creature uh no that's not synergistic and really not really worth it it's too expensive disrupt the quorum cost four got all creatures you don't control very very nice i like that then we have italy primal storm wow okay that's a far left field play here it's a six six elder dinosaur cost six when it attacks us out the top card of each player's library then you may cast any number of spells from when those cards without paying their mana cost um i mean it maybe the one-off would be nasty why not but i don't see the synergy of it here I understand the principle that you're using your opponent's cards against them, but I don't see the, the synergy here. So I'll put it as a no. Then we have Fiendish Duo. First strike, if a source would deal damage to an opponent, it deals double that much damage. In this deck, yes, it's worth it. Absolutely. So I would say that it is synergistic and I will keep it. Frontier Warmonger is a 4-4 that costs 4. Whenever one or more creatures attack one of your opponents or a Planeswalker they control, those creatures gain menace until the end of turn. Very good, very synergistic. I love that part. And then... Castle Tyrant of the Cliffs is a legendary ogre warrior. That's a 5 4 that costs 5. Whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks, if you're the defending player, create a 3 3 red ogre creature token unless the creature's controller pays 3. This is a deterrent and also it just gives you creatures to block if the deterrent is non effective. In this deck, it is synergistic. Now, is it the best one? Hmm, not really, but still, it's a small deterrent and it could be there. And 5 5 or 5 4 that gives you some ups upside whenever they attack for each creature yeah that's not bad then we get spectacular showdown it's a sorcery costs two it's red put a double strike counter on target creature then go at each creature that had a double strike counter put on it this way so uh so I, I'm, I'm seeing now with this, I've just realized that this is, you may choose any number of other creatures that spell core target and pay two for those creatures. So this definitely can make the gold pass on to other creatures. I thought of it only as your own creatures, but fair enough. I see the synergy even more because you do this, put a deckable strike counter, put in all the creatures for you pay as much as you want you can overload it of course as well but you if you don't have the cost to overload it um yeah very good and also i just realized that so <laughs> there goes me um then we have vengeful uh, to be fair we haven't had a uh, like target specifically it's more choose um certain amounts of creatures um up until now but yeah yeah makes sense then we have a vengeful ancestor is a three four spirit dragon cost four flying when it's battlefield attacks go target creature whenever go to creature attacks it deals one damage to its controller very nasty i like it and it is synergistic then we have anya merciless angel very beautiful very beautiful that's a four four angel cost five has flying any merciless angel gets plus three plus three for each opponent whose life total is less than half their starting life total so in the game of commander that'd be 20 or less so it'd be 19 actually less than and then as long as an opponent's life total is less than half their starting life total anya has indestructible okay that's interesting um i don't know what to say about this is it 
Not really. I mean, your 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 opponents are gonna be killing each other, so it is definitely an advantage for it. But doesn't really play with the buffing or debuffing or blocking. So it's a um, meh. I, it's it's something that if you don't have anything better, keep it. But otherwise, just remove it. Boris Reckoner. 3-3 Minotaur Wizard that costs 3 any of the Boris. Whenever it is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any target and then it gains first strike until the end of turn. Again, yes, I understand you're, how you're trying to make it. Deflecting Palm costs only 2 as an instant. The next time a source you of your choice would deal damage, so you prevent that damage if the damage pre is prevented this way. Deflecting Palm deals that much damage to a source's controller. I really like it. There is an angel that costs, if I'm not mistaken, 7 or something like that that you can flip the damage as well. I don't know that they would put in here so it wasn't actually an angel it's a shining show which is an instant you may remove a white card from your hand with convert a mana cost of x and then rather than paying the cost and the next x damage that the source of your choice would deal to you or a creature you control this turn is dealt to target creature or player instead i was wondering if this card would be in the deck let's see if it is because this would actually be the perfect place to put it then we get gisela blade of gold knight which is a 5-5 angel that costs a whooping seven flying first striker if a source would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent opponent controls that source deal double that damage that player and a permanent instead if a source would deal damage to you or a permanent you control prevent half the damage rounded up of course it's very good it is super expensive and you don't have any treasure makers in this deck but it's definitely good uh ancient stone idol not really great i don't really care for it so instead of Akram, in a new version I've not seen this um, illustration before, so that's really beautiful. I like that. But yeah, keep it if you need it. But most of the times, yeah, you might not need it depending on your mana base and uh, how you build your artifacts. Anyway, still Hellkite. It's a 5-5 five, five flyer. Costs 6 generic. For 2, it gets plus 1, plus 0 until the end of turn. And for X, it's for each null and permanent mana value X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by still Hellkite this turn. It's an interesting way to target and remove and destroy things from opponents. Eh, don't know. If you don't have any better removal, keep it. Otherwise, I wouldn't. Oh, Tom of Legends makes a return. Cost to generic as an artifact and enters with the battlefield with a page counter on. Well, the commander enters the battlefield with attack. Put a page counter on this, and then you remove a page counter, tap it, and, and draw a card. It's a great way to, to draw. It's interesting that they would put it in this deck for some reason, but hey, oh. Castle Lantern Veil makes a return. Very good card for overall humans deck i don't know that you want it in this deck because again it's more synergistic with humans deck or with tokens deck so why is it here we do not know there are some token interaction i think one or two maybe three with Elspeth, but other than that exotic orchard for a calm cure kelp which makes the the goblin labyrinth of scophos okay this uh, removes the target attacking or blocking creature of combat so it's the same as the maze of it so you would play both in this kind of deck to solidify the idea that they can't attack you needle spires okay so this becomes a two one elemental creature that will strike until the end of turn and it's still a land that's nice to see it uh scavenger grounds okay uh slayer stronghold uh, yeah you can buff target creature and again you can buff your opponent's creatures with it uh it's not bad temples of course throne of the high city which makes you become a monarch i don't care much for the monarch ability so nah war room always nice um basically you're 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 paying to two life every time to draw a card plus three mana if you don't have any better ways of drawing you can ghostly prison cost three it's white and enchantment and creatures can't attack you unless they control paste two genera for each creature they control that's attacking you very very good and that's exactly what i wanted to see gideon sacrifice instant instant cost one it's white choose a creature or a walker you control all damage that will be dealt this turn to you or permanent you control is dealt to that creature to the chosen permanent instead that's very nice you can pariah this way so again the effects that i was talking about martial impetus and enchantment aura cost three we saw this before enchanted creature gets plus one plus one is goaded whenever an enchanted creature attacks each other creature that's attacking one of your opponent gets plus one plus one until the end of turn very very nice i like this because this is instigating that idea 
of the decks. Then we have Ors of Advocates is a 1-4 human advisor, cost 3, and it's white. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on a creature they control if the player does not. Creatures that player controls can't attack you or planeswalkers you control until the end of turn. So, so long as they keep putting the, the stuff and buffing their creatures, they can't attack you. If they choose not to, they can attack you. It's synergistic with the commander, and it's a cute one of doing this. Oh, wow, I haven't seen the seals in forever. What was the first time I saw the, I saw the seals? Was it Prophecy? I don't even remember the seals. So let me know in the comments down below. Okay, it's an enchantment. Cost to sack it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. I mean... There are better effects nowadays, but okay. Soul Snare and Shaman cost one. It's nice to see it back, I will say that. Soul Snare and Shaman cost one. And for one, sack it to exile target creature that's attacking you or a planeswalker you control. So again, another way of, hey, you're gonna attack me. Careful, I'm gonna do something to it. It's not bad. Um, there are better single target removals in white than this, but if you pair this with other stuff, then this you can keep. Vow of Duty costs three, it's an enchantment or a chanted creature gets plus two plus two, has vigilance and can't attack you or planeswalkers you control. Very, very, very nice and very synergistic. Wall of Omens, Defender, when it enters the battlefield, it, you draw a card, it's a zero four Defender. And you, there was a combo that with, if I'm not mistaken, I, this was a very old combo. I'm talking here maybe around the times of Meriden or maybe before Meriden came out, the first official set where you could put Pariah on a wall. And I don't remember if it was a wall of Omen. It was a wall where you could prevent all damage and or you would put the Mother of Runes and then the damage would go to her and then you could give protection from the color that the damage was being dealt with and then the damage would dissipate. And again, it worked with Pyra. I had a deck, it was an Envec or in core, in core deck like that. It was ages ago. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Defender, meh, not really useful. Curse of Opulence. It, I mean, Defenders are useful in the idea that you can create bodies. So, a Curse of Opulence, it costs one red. It's an aura curse. It enchants a player that whenever the enchanted player is attacked, create a gold token. Each opponent attacking the player does the same. And whenever a gold token is created, it's an artifact that you can sacrifice that mana of any color. So it's a treasure token, basically. And this, again, deters people from attacking you and allows them to attack someone else. Right of the Raging Storm, it costs five Zen enchantment. And then you get creatures named Rager can't attack you or a planeswalker you control. And at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player creates a 5-1 red elemental creature token named Lightning Rager. And it has trample, haste, and at the beginning of your step, sacrifice this creature. Yeah, okay. So it's a um, ball lightning, basically, that you give to everybody else and uh, it just can't attack you. Very, very good. I like it. Sh so long as this one stays in play, this is going to be a nasty, nasty one. Shiny Impetus, Enchantment Aura, the cost plus three and it's red and it's an enchanted creature gets plus two plus two and is goaded whenever enchanted creature attacks you create a treasure token very nice and i like this keep it in the deck vow lightning and try a creature it's an aura cost three it's red and try creature gets plus two plus two has first strike and can't attack you or planeswalkers to control again goaded very very nice a king signet of course bloodthirsty blade so a creature gets plus two plus zero and is goaded and then you can attach it to a creature on opponent controls, activate it only as a sorcery. Very nice. Keep going, going, going. And then with the Fell War Stone, that's interesting. Um, I don't know that in this deck you really need the Fell War Stone because it's a two coster, but whatever. Then we have the Mind Stone, it allows you to draw a soul ring. Talisman, Talisman of Conviction, I like that. Thought Vessel doesn't really have a place in this deck. You're not drawing an insane amount of cards, even with the, the, the cards that allow you to draw. So that I would say that that's not necessary unless you really have a lot of draw outlets. Then you have Axis Tunnel, target creature with power three or less, can't be blocked this turn. And this is great for an Amborka, for example. So that's really, really nice. And any effects like that, I would keep and put into the deck so that you can do more with Nelly. And then, yes, Ash Baron, the usual, Boris Garrison, man, Command Tower, Escape Tunnel, again, 
very nice it's unfortunate that you have to sack it but it's still nice to be able to do that then we get the myriad really quite again no maximum hand size but you don't have a lot of draw so blah. rock's passage very good that's the other one that i want to put in sun home fortress of the legion tiger creature gains double strike until the end of turn again you're buffing not necessarily your creatures you can buff your opponent's creatures as well temple of the false god meh and then we get a total of nine planes and seven mountains so let's look at the deck as a whole does the deck try and do something new yes it does and i really appreciate it for that it is definitely trying to achieve something that has been hinted at in other previous commander decks which is the ability to gold your opponent's creatures and just have them play off each other without you having to worry too much about it now here's the thing i would put a good chunk of cards that as i said before in this kind of deck helps me prevent damage to myself whenever i can't gold helps me divert that damage helps me protect myself there are cards like that and also some good removals for the cards in effect you would become sort of like a control in these colors there is a good synergy with a lot of the cards especially um, half the creatures from what i can see and a very good chunk of enchantments some instants some sorceries and uh, some lands now what it does good is the ability to gold and to protect yourself but only to a certain degree does it do the protection okay so because of that you'll want to reinforce that side then there are some choices that really don't make sense as usual there are ways to reinforce a deck like this by giving it better ways of mm, removing stuff so whether it's spot removal or board wipe or a specific type of removal and also protecting your creatures as well is a good thing because if uh, your creatures are not on the board uh, then you are struggling to give constantly the ability to be goaded and have menace and all this stuff so um in, in that regard that's not too bad now granted you don't need necessarily too many great creatures to do that but the ones that you do have here are quite good just to reinforce them a little bit and then the other ones the extra ones support that because at the moment these extra ones they don't really support your commander and that many cards that many creatures which is half of your creatures you'll want to have more towards that there is this theme of tokens at one point that makes absolutely no sense i know that boris has a lot of great potential with tokens and also with equipment and all that stuff but that's not what we're trying to do here so in that regard i'm just shaking my head and because of that i don't think the deck is necessarily as sound and as outlined as certain other decks i I will give this deck because of its originality and because of the things that it does do right a 6.5 out of 10. I'm refraining from giving it just a simple 6 because of the originality and the fact that it does do in part well enough alone what it wants to do. But the problem is that the other part is very scattered. And when you have out of a 100 card deck, about 14 cards that are only creatures and then you count maybe some of the enchantments some of the sorceries you know when you have a grand total of 20 to 30 cards which is going to be 20 to 30 percent of your cards that don't really do what it's supposed to do it's really really struggling and you want to support those creatures and you want to buff those creatures up more you want to power them up more and um, yeah it's it's a bit restricted in that side on top of that the fact that it doesn't really have any straight removals like source to plushers is a bit of an insult because they they put it almost in every single deck nowadays so because of that i'm going to give it a 6.5 it can be a very aggressive deck in a way that i've never seen it done so i like that so because of that this is what we will go with and of course there are many ways of upgrading it as i said you know one of the easy ways is putting stuff like shining gold pariah and other cards like that to protect you more on the side of when you get swung at from your opponents and other than that that's it i think it's a fun deck let me know in the comments down below if you agree with what i said if you don't agree with what i said the changes that i would make to the deck maybe i missed something maybe you thought up with something let us know in the comments down below as we read and reply to every one of them if you like this kind of video reviews make sure to like and subscribe to the channel as we will be making more of these videos for the other three decks and also because it's small channels like ours 
it does really help a lot. And other than that, we wish you a lovely day, a blessed day. Be good, be kind, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!